Hey everyone, I'm Disturbing Puppet, and we're going to do something a little different today. We're going to play Little Banners of Ruin. So this just came out in full. Uh, this was, again, it was an early access, and I'd seen some videos on it. So I picked it up in early access, and as opposed to some other early access stuff, I did not touch it until it came out fully. So I'm playing around a little bit. Uh, this is another roguelite deck builder, but there are some interesting things going on in it. Um, you do have multiple characters. You can do multiple actions with your characters. You do have cards that are your actions, cards that are your items, that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's just, it's so insanely hot today that I'm just going to do this really quick. We're just going to do a little bit of this just to kind of show it off and uh, see if people might be interested in it. Um, we're going to try a new game. I have not made it to the end. Every time I get through to kind of the third boss and then he always kills me. So we have a choice of different characters. Um, I think we're going to go... I do like the way they look in the armor and stuff. We're going to go Weasel Bear for this run, I think. Um, weasels have an ability where they can do some bleed effects on people. Bears are just kind of big and tough. All right. There are some kind of modifiers you can do, but I haven't messed around with that at all. So we're sort of... It's kind of a Robin Hood sort of setting where we're going into a city to take out uh, sort of the leader. Uh, it's not actually like the king. It's sort of... Yeah, kind of like the Sheriff of Nottingham kind of thing. All right, so we have actions. Let's take a look here at our characters. So we have a couple actions, uh, each one, and then we have, I think it's called the will points. There are certain cards that will use will points, um, also abilities to use these will points. Most cards use the actions. Uh, most of them are one, but there are two, three, that kind of thing. Um, so we have our stuff, our characters. We've got equipment, so we can change out equipment and gear and stuff. Right now we've got an axe and shield on our weasel, and we've got a two-handed sword on our bear. Um, we could swap that around if we wanted to. There's no real reason we don't have to kind of change it around. And we do change the way we look when we swap out our gear and stuff, which is kind of cool. All right, uh, we've got money up here, our deck up here. We'll kind of look at that as we go. Early on, the game's pretty easy, but then it uh, really ramps up. So as we're going through, we're trying to get through the section and uh, as we're going through, we'll have different options of different parts of the city we want to go through. And we'll be able to pick one of these and it'll go away. Um, the number up here depends on like how long it's going to stay around. So if there's a two and I do something that's a one, the other two will drop to a one. If anything else is one, it'll just go away. So we'll have a choice most of the time. All right, Hidden Gem gives me an upgrade to a card. Prey, we can increase character stats, which is always good. Doggedness, uh, we start with extra shields, so defense. Uh, let's increase someone's stats. So we can increase stamina or will in this case. I've seen this before, too, where it can be health. Um, let's go with... Ooh, tempting. Um, so will does come back. You have essentially one for the fight. And if you have two, then you get two for the fight, that kind of thing. So if you burn it in the next fight, you'll just have it all back. Let's get some extra stamina. And we'll give it to Costling here. Because Weasels have a cool ability that lets them get some uh, hidden blades I want to use. All right. So sometimes we have things that are blocked like this. Sometimes streets, that kind of thing. Forgotten Tunnel. Raucous laughter echoes down the damp, dark tunnel. The Enders won't suspect a thing. So we're sneaking into the city, essentially. You emerge from the black and find yourself in one of the guards' bunks. Whoop. Where the devil did you come from? You can't be! Alright, the early fights are generally pretty easy. Once you get into the second phase, they're still not too bad. Third is pretty bad. Alright, so we've got two different ranks. So front rank is this top to bottom and top to bottom. There's also lanes. So if you have people in the three different positions, a lane is from left to right, or right to left, whichever way you want to look at it. So some attacks will hit everyone in a lane, so the two like this, or an entire rank, everyone in the front. Um, if you do have people in the front and the back on your side or the opponent's side, it will alternate, um, whereas the front will attack first, then the back will attack. But on your side, if you have people front and back, you can use them all on your turn however you want. Um, there are ways to move around, but there aren't a lot of ways. Uh, there are ways to move enemies, so if I move someone into the other position, so, like, with a kick, if the position's behind them, move him into it. So we could kick one of these guys into the back, which would mean he wouldn't attack this turn, but would attack next turn. So we can drop the attacks. Um, this game isn't super clear about attacks coming in. I have to actually look. So it'll show you here, this person's attacking for eight and attacking for eight. But doesn't show you who, unless I mouse over. So you're attacking the bear, you're attacking our weasel. So I should probably refer to him by name, Fortright and Costling. Uh, we are selected the bear first, so we have his ability up here, which lets me get rid of some negative stuff for armor. And the weasel, 
we can draw some concealed blades. So they are cards we have to use, uh, pay to use, but they do some damage and add some bleed, and the bleed will just do damage over time, as you would expect. Okay, we've got blocks, we've got bleed attacks, we've got more blocks, and we've got a way to move, we've got a way to kick the opponent. But we are limited in what we can do. So, what do we want to do? You're going to attack the bear for 8 that will get through the shield. You're attacking that will not get through my defenses. And defenses don't go away at the end of the turn, so they'll just keep kind of stacking up. Um, I could go ahead and buff up some defense. I could kick one of these guys in the back. Um, I don't have... I've only got the one attack, which isn't going to do a ton. But we could throw that out there. All right, Mr. Bear. Um, and it will also depend. So you'll see weapon damage 8. If we switch to him... Weapon damage is still 8. Sometimes weapons will have different damages, so it will change depending on that. And it doesn't always show you, so even if I select a card and put it over someone, it doesn't tell me exactly how much and doesn't change. There are things that you can put on an opponent that will increase the damage they take or increase your damage, but it won't actually show you that. You have to kind of do the math yourself. Um, so that's something that I wish would change. All right, so Mr. Bear, let's hit the weaker enemy. All right, got a nice bleed going. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I think we're just going to kick you back so that you're not going to get a shot. We're going to go with a take cover, which gives me a free additional card that I can play to add some defense to you. We take our shot on you. Uh, I have nothing else I can do, really, except just boost the defense. I might as well because it doesn't go away. I could have moved one of my people instead, but that would use a will point, which I didn't want to do. Okay, so since we moved him, this person, now, this mouse is not going to do anything. The rabbit is going to attack, or the hare is going to attack our weasel, which is basically fine. It's not going to get through my defenses, so that's all right. Right, so we do have our longsword, which hits an entire rank, so if they were both in the same, it would hit both of them. There isn't much I can do about that. We just have some basic attacks and blocks. So we'll just go with that. Um, I could just leave this guy. The bleed will kill him. But since he's acting, he will not take bleed damage this turn. He'll take it next turn. So we might as well just pound on the rabbit in the back. And these are always five. It doesn't matter what your weapon is. The basic strikes are always five. Uh, so we can do two for eight damage. Why not? Uh, I put some defense on you. Do a little bit of a stab. A little chopping. Defense. So what I'm probably going to do in this is just go to the first boss and then I'll call it. Um, just because it's insanely hot that it's really difficult to record stuff right now because I don't have AC. I can't stand sitting here with the AC off or, well, I don't have AC, but um, I have a little room cooler I can use that cools down a room for a little while, but it only really works in a very small space. And it's super noisy, so I can't really do anything with it uh, and play games. So, well, I can play, I just can't record. That's what I mean. So Bleed's going to kill you before you get a chance to do anything. That's fine, so we'll just pound on you in the back. Which is unfortunate, because they do have Vanguard, which is a bunch of extra damage people in the front. Okay, so we do have unique weapons, too. So this guy's got a hatchet, so we got a hatchet card. He can use it. If we use it and I break defense, we gain two charge, which just increases my damage for the next attack. If I switch to my bear, he can't use the hatchet. So this is another thing that I came across too, is if you have extra weapons in your stash, so if I pick up weapons from someone and hold on to them in case I might want to use them, it adds the card to my deck, and I don't know why it does that. I kind of feel like that's a bug, but I don't know. It seems very strange um, that it does that. But anyway, it's 8 damage, plenty enough to kill you, and I could just kill this guy, so we might as well just kill him and finish it quickly, instead of let the bleed take him out. All right, we get some money. We get a chance to draw a card. I don't have to take the card. I can just back out. Okay, discard a card to gain three charge. Uh, experience strike. This is kind of pricey. Five damage. Each time you play this card in combat, it does more damage. If you don't play it, the damage is reset to five. So that's decent. Uh, reckless aid. So that's 15 defense to an ally. Active character and ally both gain winded, which reduces the amount of actions I can do. I don't really like reducing my actions much. Experience strike isn't too bad, especially as we level up. So I'll take it. You kind of see the stuff will drop away. So we have the informant. Hooded figure looms in the dim light. It seems they've been expecting you. So we don't really have a choice. Everything else is blocked. 
As you turn a corner, you find yourself confronted by a wiry figure, their identity masked by the dim light, but their noble birth betrayed by their fine robes. I know you've come to Dawn's point, the low, dry voice echoes off the cold stone. I can help you reach him. My family are being held captive in Old Town. Help us flee the city, and I will arrange your entry into the keep. Find a boat and free my family, then meet us in the sewers below the royal court. Do as I ask, and you will have your blood. You exchange a solemn understanding nod with the old wolf before he sharply hurries off. So as we kind of go through and play the game more, we will unlock more uh, different kinds of characters. I haven't unlocked wolves that I can use for my character class or the rabbits. Um, the enemies will have all kinds of different sorts of uh, critters you'll fight. And some of them are quite nasty, especially as we go up. All right, so nothing really special. Sometimes there will be a like an elite fight you can choose. So we'll just do any fight. It doesn't matter. We'll just get rid of all of them. All right, bunch of mice. So this would be a good time to have my attack that hits everybody, but I don't. I don't have a lot of defense either. Um, this uh, pacified, so this does mean that once I have this, I can't do anything else. So if I can play that, I play that last. Right, so I do have a hatchet. We can bust through somebody's defenses. All three of them are attacking my bear. All right. I should probably refer to him by name. Fort Wright. All right, let's do some chopping then. So I've got a bonus. So here, this is five, but because of my bonus, it'll actually be seven. But it doesn't actually show me that on the card. I just have to know that and add it myself. So I can do some damage to someone's defenses, but that's about it. Um, I could play both of these on my bear, which might be the best choice. So we'll just have our weasel just knock down some other defenses. So Fort Wright, we have to play the guard first. If I play this first, I won't be able to do anything. I can still use my uh, abilities, though. Just no cards. But we burned through all cards. Okay, so if three or more allies, defense goes up. Sure, gotcha. Okay, so I've got a way to move myself. We've got defense. So, like, the shield is on him. He is the only one who can use it. All right, we can discard a card to get some increased damage. Uh, I don't see that being that great of a call. I think you angered Fort Wright, so he's going to start doing a little bit of hitting. Uh, yeah, just kill off that mouse. Excellent. You're going for Fort Wright again. All right, we'll play the round shield just because it will give me the take cover, which I can then play on him for some defense. And I can go ahead and do this to prepare for next turn. I think I'm actually going to have him do it. So we'll go Momentum and discard this. So next attack, we'll do three extra damage. See, that always confuses me too. It was two times three, but he hit me three times. So I always assume it's two times for three damage each, but it's actually two damage three times. It's the same total damage, but it could affect uh, some other things like your boosts. So if I have this boost, instead of this being a one times three, it's actually a four times three. That's probably enough just to kill you. Not quite. Uh, let's go with... doesn't really matter. We don't actually level up cards by playing them or anything, so let's just kill them. Okay, we have draw a card, gain three prep, um, and this just lets me draw additional cards. It's okay, but it's a little pricey. Carnage, so this is another mechanic I haven't messed with too much, ruining a card. Ruins a card in your hand, deal eight damage and three bleed. Uh, every time you play this card, damage is increased by eight and bleed is increased by three. But when I ruin a card, it, it changes another card in my deck. Uh, I think it's actually random, or do I get to pick? Um, but it makes a card way less useful and sometimes actually harmful. So I don't really mess with it much. Uh, setup isn't bad, I've had this before. So six damage, apply two vulnerable draw cards. So if I have vulnerable in an enemy, I do extra damage to them. It does tick down, so it's, it's just kind of a flat effect. Very similar to kind of Slay the Spire sort of thing. Um, setup's not bad. I think I'll take setup. I am getting a lot of pricier cards though. 
All right, we have intelligence. So you find a letter from your superiors detailing information concerning the enemy, so extra XP. So we do have XP, we can level up. Um, I wouldn't mind getting XP. Courage, so it's a chance to improve. I'm not sure what that means. Doggedness, it does tell me it gives me 15 extra. Uh, I'm assuming this is a fight. It could be some kind of event where I have to pick something. Let's check it out. I'm not sure I've seen this before. Some enders are hot on your tail. You turn a corner to find a seemingly dead end. Costling yells, over here, a hatch. Bah, the cursed thing is sealed. So I could force it open. We can gain extra stamina, but take some health damage. Uh, I think that's fine. Or we could just fight. So if you were down on health, you could take this instead. Yeah, let's do that. Force it open. Costing, Cosling exhaustively bludgeons the lock with their weapon until it finally thunders open. Quick, get in. As Cosling begins to heave the door shut, a deft arrow finds its mark in their shoulder. You disappear into the shadows. And there will be ways we can heal up and stuff as we go through. All right. And I think this is kind of the rank of the depth to getting to the boss fight. So it's kind of like boss fight, boss fight, boss fight. All right, large crowd. It's blocked back alley. Select a lane, remove the next two cards, or we can get the hidden gem to get an upgrade token. I will happily take the upgrade token. All right, so this works. Gain 10 florins. So we put this on a card, and then whenever we play it, it will also do this. So sometimes it'll reduce the skill cost, add some damage, or do other random things. So I want to do something that anyone can play for this, not something only one character can play. Preferably something cheap, so maybe just a basic attack or a basic block. Maybe just a basic block, because that'll give me just additional money as well. It's not much. All right, so you can kind of see here we went down on these two at level 13, but this is 14 still, so it's still blocked. So we've got to kind of get by down a side route to get around the large crowd. Okay, basic combat, off we go. Costling is kind of hurt, so we'll have to be a bit careful with him. Two scoundrels. And they're both attacking Costling, which is a bunch of crap. So that's more damage than my defenses. I can add a little bit of defenses, so I will definitely do that. Get a little bit of uh, money in the process. They don't have anything special going on. All right. Fort right. Deal out some smackage. Really doesn't matter which one that much. Um, and I can play both of these, so I might as well. Let's do some actual health damage. And get a ton of defense. Good to go. So these early fights are quite easy. I could do more um, by using Kosling's ability. Okay, so attacking and moving. Well, I think we're going to longsword in the back with our bear buddy. Almost kills him. So they're splitting up the attacks. Fortright, we'll just finish him off. Let's see, I could actually move and get out of the position so that I'm not being attacked. I could even just move to here and I'd be fine. Uh, some attacks will hit an entire rank, and if it's that case, then I would have to move to the back. But when I play this, I can move wherever I want as long as there's an empty spot. Um, in this case, I can pretty safely defend this so it's not a big deal. So I'm just going to stay put and just do some damage and bleed, and uh doesn't even matter if I take damage. I could have, again, gone ahead and done my ability, but I don't need it yet. Oh, bleed. So bleed ignores armor. That is kind of a negative thing, but we'll finish this off quite quickly here. Uh, costling, just chop him down. Okay, draw this character's next talent card from your draw pile. So that's uh, different cards, like skills or talents or weapon cards. Wild Brawl, every character in the party loses one stamina for every stamina point spent. Deal six to a rank. It's okay. Um, we could grab another solid footing. Uh, Wild Brawl is okay. I could take that. And we both level up. Nice. I wish we got our health back when we leveled up, though. All right. 
So leveling up first time, uh, every time you get to pick stamina or will, and then I think it alternates between adding a card and then adding over here, you'll get kind of a trait. So let's go with stamina. So these are unique to him, only he can play these. Bulls charge, deal weapon damage. If target has moved this combat, apply six bleed and three, what is that, uh, vulnerable. Apply two stacks of overwhelm, gain four charge, banish, so it's gone for the combat. Overwhelm means doing extra damage to the target. Uh, or we can get some health back, but I poison myself and the poison increases after that. So it heals me. Poison, uh, it's more almost like acid. It, it will target, if you have shields first, it hits the shields first, unlike bleed, which ignores your shield. So it sort of like eats away at your armor before eating into your skin kind of thing. Um, potentially helpful. I've had this before. This is also quite good because it is free. Increases attack value and damage the enemy takes. I think I'm actually gonna take roar. I like that more. And we've got four. Let's actually grab Will because his ability is pretty decent. Let's see what we get here. Slippery. Rotate with target ally. Spawn to conceal blades. That's pretty nice. I haven't seen that before. Uh, ruin a card. Apply eight crippled. So this is if someone moves, they'll take damage. Spawn a concealed blade. Or sulfuric bomb. If active character in front rank, uh, target rank gains five poison. If they're in the back rank, the target rank gains 10 poison. So we can hit an entire rank with a bunch of poison. That's pretty decent. I kind of like Slippery as well, because that could kind of help me avoid taking damage. I do like the Sulfuric Bomb, though. That's a pretty good chunk of poison. And what I would probably do with them would be to just start him in the back rank. So if it does pop up, we can just nail a whole rank with a ton of... Uh, poison. Yeah, that's a hard one. I like Slippery as well because it could help me get out of trouble. But yeah, I'm going to take Sulfuric Bomb. So what I'm going to do... Look at our combat positions. So Costling is currently there. I'm actually going to move you to the back rank. And I will leave you there. I don't want to have anybody lined up uh, in lanes. It doesn't actually really matter too much. But there are certain attacks that will hit a rank or hit a lane. So I want to keep them separate. Okay, so we have that area blocked. We've got weapons cache, so we could find some weapons or armor that might be better. Or some kind of help, which could be a card. It could be something else. I think it's usually a card. Uh, let's take a look at the weapons cache. Quietly haul the chest to a nearby alley and unlock it. You'd best take a look what's inside. All right, got tons of stuff in here. Okay, so superior heavy armor. Uh, so start each combat with 38 defense, gain 10 and 2 winded every turn. So this is good for later, but early on it's a little hard because the winded reduces your stamina. It does give you extra armor every turn, but early on it's a little hard to overcome that minus 2 actions. So this one is 30, gain 5 and 1 winded. Another 38 and 2. I could go ahead and hold on to this and put it on later. It won't affect anything. I only have two spots here. This is the same as this, right? No, it's not, actually. So this is actually 9 damage. It does take two actions, which is a little difficult. Got a bow. It's two-handed, so I can't have it. You can't swap back and forth. Um, you have to kind of choose. So I could put this on Causling in the back, but I'd lose that shield for him and potentially for helping everyone else out. I haven't really messed with the bows too much, but three is pretty expensive to use for an attack. Uh, I could go ahead and go with this. So it's nine damage if the opponent intends to attack this character deal one times four to adjacent opponents on rank. So this can be quite good, except when you run into people who have a counter attack ability, um, this will just be a bit of a problem because um, I, I have run into that. So what do I want to do? I think for armor, what I might do, I do like the extra stamina every turn that he's got. Um, I could give him the minus one action, the regular heavy armor. 
do that now. So he'll have some decent defenses, but he'll be a bit slower in combat. Or I could hold out for trying to find some other better lighter armor later. It's very tempting to do this. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to actually leave him in the light armor, at least for now. I do think he can handle it for this part. Um, as far as the bow goes, it's tempting, but 3 for 10 damage is not great. It does do an additional 8 for every rank between this character and the opponent, which would be at least 1, because I'd have him in the back rank. So it'd be 18 damage for 3. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, that's getting reasonable. And I do have a way to spawn other attacks. Hmm. The problem is I can't put it here and hold on to it because then I will keep drawing this card even though no one has it equipped and I won't be able to use it in combat, which again, I'm pretty sure is a mistake. Uh, what I'm going to do then is, I mean, I could even give this and the shield to him instead of the long sword. Yeah, let's do that. All right, we're going to play around with this a whole bunch this. All right, that's going to want me to swap it directly. Fine. I'm going to do that, and then you can have the shield. And you can have the bow. How about that? So we'll have a bunch of actions with him. He'll be able to potentially do a good chopping attack, and we'll have some range there. And I'm going to hold on to this in case I want to swap to this later after we picked up a bunch more stamina. That's the idea, anyway. I do need to heal up Costling. All right, so we can hide, uh, discard from each other lane. So if you're quick, you can duck away and avoid any suspicious guards. You'll probably get some weird looks from other folks, though. Or high spirits, gain high spirits, start your next combat with a vigor. Uh, next time you lose stamina, it's refunded and the vigor's removed. That's pretty good. I'll take that. Okay. So we have a Sage, modify your deck. Uh, I think this is mainly just getting another card. I don't think it's actually anything super great. Discard from each other lane by hiding. Blackfoot agents discard a random combat. There are no combats out here. So I don't think it will actually do anything. We'll just progress further down this alleyway, essentially. I guess we can check the Sage and see what we've got. You approach the ancient figure who looks older than the knotted wooden walking stick he leans on. Some florins for a wise fellow, he croaks in a slow, faint voice. So I can pay 100 florins to gain a skill. I can pay 150 to remove a card. I can pay 200 to reroll talent, but I don't have any talents. Um, so it's 100 to gain a skill, I guess. Let's see what we get. Okay. Coordination. If after character is in the front rank, deal weapon damage. If in the back rank, apply 5 charge. Oh, to the ally in front. That's not bad. Uh, I do like No Mercy. Six damage, opponent with the lowest health, and it's free. Double team um, can be good, mainly if you have two of the same uh, kind of species. So it's six defense and one charge. If they're adjacent and the same, uh, they're 12 defense each and five charge. I'm going to take the No Mercy, although coordination is not bad. I like free stuff. Okay, we have heavy patrols, so I could go ahead and fight this. This is an elite fight, I think. Or we can just uh, bypass down the side alley. We'll just do that. All right, so in order to progress the story we saw from the beginning, I do need to buy a boat, and I have enough. So I guess I will. Money mainly used for buying cards, but also for recruiting new people, so you do want to have a decent amount of money. Boat merchant. You approach the merchant who stares through you with glassy blind eyes. Greetings, what can an old fisher do for you? You explain you need a boat sent to the northern sewers, no questions asked. I don't like the sound of what you're up to, but the less I know, the better, he says reluctantly. 150 florins, you'll have your boat. If that don't suit you, I got other stuff to trade. So we can also remove a skill card. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Okay. Anxiety. Party takes five damage. Well, I don't want to do that. Fight or flight. That's an elite combat. Blackfoot contact. Chance to heal. I'm probably going to have to pay 
A cloaked figure emerges from an alleyway. They reveal a crow's foot brooch under their lapel. Let's look at the good stuff. Blackfoot Weasel brandishes his arsenal of foul-looking concoctions under his hood. His beauties are for some ender gold cloaks, but it looks like you could use some of this. For the pain, that is. He hands you a familiar-looking bottle, carefully armored with fine crafted leather. It's my last bottle. Costling. It tastes foul enough that you wonder if he really did just poison you. Offering thanks, you look up at him to find him already vanished. Alright, healed up. Okay, we have overzealous guards. A pair of guardsmen are rounding on a black bear. Or we can do the other things. Um, if we do this, these will go away. Yeah, let's check this out. We hear two guardsmen hurling verbal abuse at a local black bear. She's probably a spy, they jeer. You can see her becoming visibly distressed when they begin to wave their weapons at her threateningly. Show them a real spy. Enter combat. I think if you have money, you can also get them to stop. Alright. You are both attacking my bear up front. Uh, I'm not super surprised. We got our sulfuric bomb, so suck it. Wait a minute. Why is it only one? Ah, okay, so it's the bomb hasn't gone off yet. I see. So then they'll gain 10. So, there we go. Alright, we can also get someone ready to take some damage. So you can see, they've got quite a bit of defense there. They're attacking me for 16, so I do want some additional defense up front if I can, but I don't have any. I can kick one of them back, um, which will reduce the amount of attacks coming in, but that is a bit of an issue as well, because then they're not going to take as much... Or maybe nothing from the poison. That's disappointing. Alright. We're going to go... Battle Axe. And because he was going to attack me, we'll do some other chopping. Oh, I should have done the uh, setup first, probably, with him. Alright, let's set up him. So I got some defense. Let's take that. And I'm going to go ahead and use my ability, which is going to give me a bunch of concealed blades. So it's two damage and some bleed. Uh, I could get, let's see, six and a couple more. Let's work on you a little bit. I don't know if the bleed and the poison is going to be enough combined. It Depends on when the timing for the poison is going to tick off to hit this person, whether they're going to die before or after they hit my bear. And we'll discard. Yeah, we'll discard here, I guess. Let's see what the timing of this is. So there's the bleed. Yeah, okay, so the bomb's going to go off after they've taken an action. Taking a little bit of damage. Okay, so you're going to die on your turn before you take an action from the poison and the bleed. You're attacking... Causling in the back. Alright. Well, let's go ahead and roar at you then. Got a pretty good boost to both of their attacks at the moment. Uh, let's go with. All right, we got the bear going, so this is going to be five times three. Should be. Oh, but extra damage because of the vulnerable. And we've got a bonus here, so we'll also hit. Nice shot. Right. You're both attacking my weasel buddy. Not a huge fan of that, but I can block probably most of it. I could also move around. So I could even just move to another position here and I'd be fine. Uh, eight and six. I should be able to block all that, but they might. Yeah, he's going to bleed me, it looks like. So I am going to go ahead and move. Uh, 
it's not letting me for some reason, though. Why? Uh, maybe did I use my ability this turn? No, I used it last turn. I'm not sure why I can't play this. Huh. Yeah, I don't know why only my bear can do this. But I can just select him then instead. Just go there. Yeah, it's weird. Maybe I can only play it from the person I'm not... Well, I wouldn't know who's going to move. I'm not sure why it was doing that. I'm confused. Okay, poison kills you, and you're almost dead from the poison and bleed. Alright, let's just go ahead and use our bow here. <laughs> Ton of damage on that thing. Okay. Um, I do like the different powders you can get. So 5 damage to a rank and apply 5 crippled. So if they move after that, they will take more damage. We could get another setup. Precision, if this character's next attack deals damage to vitality, half the damage dealt is applied as bleed. Not bad. Um, it's kind of pricey. I think I'm going to take the yellow powder. You hear a yelp after the short but bloody scuffle concludes. I, I wasn't here. I don't know you. I, I didn't see you. She runs off. Okay, we've got quick thinking. Level up. That sounds pretty good. Off-duty guards. Unexpiring spawns. Drunken guards who we can rob. So yeah, let's go quick thinking. Level somebody up. Some guards approach. Need to act quickly. Who do you counsel? Um, who's got more XP? It was showing me before. Let's go with Fortright. With their advice, you narrowly avoid an open combat. They seem proud of their achievement, acknowledging their quick wits. Level up. Quick wits. Alright, so this time we're going to pick this and over here. Uh, we're going to go Stamina. So this is always random what you get. There's a lot of things that will you have choices from. The flow. Whenever this character plays a talent, one random card in your hand becomes zero stamina cost this turn. We've only got one will point, so I'm not playing the talents very often. So probably not super useful. Brawler. Uh, at the end, at turn end, if three or more enemies are intending to attack this character, gain an anticipation, which is basically a dodge. Party. Whenever this character is healed, they gain additional 5 vitality. I don't heal that often, though. Um, that sounds pretty good. I mean, these aren't great. Flow is okay, potentially. Uh, anticipation only really works if 3 or more are attacking me. So, it's. I mean, it's helpful in that situation. That's probably better than getting a little bit of extra health, because I'm totally avoiding an attack. I guess we'll take Anticipation, just to kind of future-proof against lots of attackers coming at me. Because you do run into bigger and bigger groups the further you go. Alright, uh, so Talisman, I haven't seen before. Augment your party. An old gray hair sits at his merchant stall, offering a wide selection of exotic trinkets. Uh, drunken Guards, we can gain money. This won't go away right away, so I'm going to take the Drunken Guards. And now I'll check out the Talisman. The stall features a dusty old green tablecloth on which a few dozen items sit, each no larger than a mouse paw. Your gaze drifts to the group of wooden trinkets and then to one in particular, a crow's foot brooch. Aye, friend, that's what you think it is, the old hare whispers. Genuine horn beam, ironwood. Black Church Iron. After a brief pause, he continues. It ain't what right what happened there to your people. He points to the brooch. A friend of mine gave me that half a lifetime ago now. He met his end, same as the tree that bore this, I expect, in flames. After a longer, pensive pause, take it. It should be with its own. Never did know how to wear it proper anyway. Alright, so... We have two choices. Start the next three combat with three restoration, which uh, heals you. Sinister opponents in the next three combats start with 30% vitality, but you earn no gold or XP. Huh. So they're massively at a disadvantage, but we don't get gold or XP. I don't like that too much. I think I'd rather have the restoration. 
but does that affect both of my characters or I'm not sure I haven't seen that before we'll have to see when it comes up all right so we've got a crossroad so we can clear it to level three so we'll get rid of these armory reserve we can uh, try to grab something decoy uh, I'm not sure how this works. I haven't messed with these too much. Select a card, move it to this lane, plus one to its counter. I don't know what... I think it's moving one of these cards is, is what it means, not actually like a card from my deck. I think it's moving a card over to here and make it stay longer. I think that's what the point is. Let's take a look at the armory. You approach the reserves, finding untidy stacks of weapon crates on the left, some chests of armor on your right. As you begin to inspect them, you hear the heavy footsteps of some guards returning from a patrol. You only have time to look at one set before they return. So we can look at both and fight combat, or we can check just weapons and armor. I've got okay weapons. Let's check the armor. I'd like a better light armor if I can. It's like all the same. Superior heavy armor. I've already got one of those. Heavy armor. Heavy armor. So it's the same stuff I already have. Uh, the superior... So I've got four. I could potentially swap heavy armor here for Fortright. So essentially we'd have three actions every turn. If I swap to the superior heavy, which is also here, I would have two actions every turn, which is pretty limiting. Uh, three I could live with for sure. So yeah, let's go ahead and upgrade to the heavy armor. So I do like that we change our armor. And I will live with that. Okay, crossroads, everything's even, doesn't really matter. Smithy, tavern, monastery. Oh, I've got just enough to hire somebody. All right. We've got a choice. I can only afford one, though. Dannington, the wolf. All right, so you have a crossbow. 13 damage, gain pacified and three charge so i can't do anything else after i play that talent toxic cascade apply toxic cascade whenever target opponent gains a status effect they also gain two poison that's okay don't have any traits or anything you start with heavy armor um which you're is actually not great because you only have two actions so you're only gonna have one action every turn um i'm gonna live with it hire dannington And then I'll take a look at my combat positions. So it wants to put him out front. I don't think that's a great idea. He does have decent armor, though. And he can do other attacks and things. Um, the crossbow makes me kind of feel like putting him in the back. It doesn't have any benefit for being back, whereas his bow does. So, yeah, we'll just live with that. That's fine. All right. It is our hideout. A safe house for you and your fellow loyalists. Slip through here into the next street. Henchman. It's a trap! It's a trap! Your awaiting brothers slain. A few elite enders triumphantly brandish their weapons in the dim light. All the exits are covered. There's only one way out. Through them. Fight Sledge. Alright, I will fight Sledge. Okay, so it is everybody's. Everybody's got the restoration. Okay. So, you're hitting my bear, you're hitting my bear, you're hitting my wolf. Uh, wolf can take that, and that's a decent amount. What I'll probably do is take out the henchman first. First things first. Sulfuric so bomb, bitches! Alright, um, I could go ahead and kick somebody out of position, but I can take these shots without taking any damage. Uh, although these guys are going to do some bleed, so I will have some bleed effects on me. Which is not great. Alright. Who's attacking you? Alright, if I hit him, then we'll hit everybody with this. So, yeah, let's do that. Just gonna generally knock down all of their defenses a bit. Okay. Let's see. Nine. Oh, nice. We can do 13 there. 10. Alright, yeah, we'll do a 13 damage and a bleed. 
Uh, let's go for the tougher of your henchmen. Just get that going. Now I could kick one of the henchmen back, just to avoid having as much hit my bear as is. But then we're not getting quite as much benefit from the bomb, so I'm going to sit on it. And I'm going to add some defense to uh, Kozling in the back. It's a little bit weak on defense. some bleed, but I've got the restoration sort of counteracting it. There's the bomb ticking off. That's going to make this a lot easier. So we're getting some armor and then taking some damage. Okay. So you have poison, charge, and shrug it off. Every time this character receives more than 15 damage from an attack, they gain 3 charge and 5 defense. So this is kind of one of those situations where, because of him being winded, he can't even use this talent. It's just, it's too hard for him to use. Okay. If active character is front rank, plus four damage, so we can do a good shot there. Uh, let's go ahead and discard the Toxic Cascade. So we're going to increase our hit. So seven right now is a bonus, so this should do 17. Let's hit you. I'm just going to get you closer to death. Uh, what are you guys doing? You're hitting everyone in the front line. You're hitting my bear. You're hitting everyone in the front line. Not great. Uh, I could go ahead and move somebody to the back line. So what is that? 12, 21-ish damage coming in the front. Yeah, I mean, I could move somebody back, but I think we'll be okay. They're not doing any bleed, and I don't think that's going to get through. Yeah, the only one who's got any charge is him, and it's only one. So he's actually going to do four times three. So that's 12, 18, 24. So we can take it. It's just going to knock off pretty much all my defenses. And I could move one person away to just not suck up that much damage. Tempting. Um, I hate using this for that. Uh, what I am going to do here... I'm going to go ahead and use my Concealed Blade. So we're going to do some damage and some bleeds. So you're taking 13 already. So that's 16. Another one is not going to be quite enough, is it? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, it's going to be one short of having him die off from poison and bleed. So I could go ahead and kill him if I do both. So at this point, he'll still have one health after taking those shots. So I'm just going to go ahead and just stab the snot out of him so he'll die. So that's just one less attack hitting everybody in the front. Bye-bye. Just letting that poison eat away at them here at this point. Okay, time to work on number two. So you're going for nobody. You're doing some kind of movement. Uh, you're attacking in the back for six. What do we want to do? Well, we've got the wild brawl. All right, let's do that. Nice shot across the way. Uh, let's blow some yellow powder in their faces. So if they move, they're going to take some damage, and he looks like he's going to move here in a second. The only person getting potentially hurt is Kosling. So we'll gain some defense. Nobody can do anything with this. I could get more blades, but I can only use one. 
Um, I don't have anything else really cool I can do here. Actually, what's your ability? This character may play another character's wielded card, weapon, or talent. Uh, that's an okay trait. Um, I haven't seen the wolves before. I haven't had one in a party. But it's not fantastic. Potentially useful, but not fantastic. Oh, you both moved. Alright, so the Billman is dead. He's going to die from poison. So we can just focus on... Uh, I think it's a sledge. Yeah. So you, we just ignore. Uh, you're going for Cosling for... Uh, quite a lot, actually. He's got 11, so that's... 2 times 4 damage. But uh, which is it? Is it... So that's either going to be 13 times 4 or 2 times 15. That's a ton of damage. Okay, no matter what, you need some defense. I don't have a way to move him right now. Uh, okay, we've got this. I'm just going to do what I can. Five damage. That's all I can do. So he's going to take a pretty good shot, no matter what. He does have counterattack here as well, so when I hit him, he is doing some damage back. Which kind of sucks, but I've got some defense. I can do some shots. Uh, I don't know that I want to do this, though. I'm going to lose three, and he's going to take a big hit. So it's not really worth it to trade for that. could get three more Concealed Blades, that would be six damage and nine bleed. So 26 health with nine bleed, 12 poison, so that's 21, so that's not enough to kill him. So I think I'm better off just holding onto the defense I have instead of hitting him and losing some defense in the process. Ow. Okay, so it was four attacks. Yeah, if I had attacked before, I'd be dead. So that's the problem. You can very quickly lose somebody, like, instantly. They do so much damage at a certain point. When they start building up the charge, especially, you can just kind of get hosed immediately. Um, I've got plenty of ways I can screw this guy. Almost dead. Um, he doesn't have any counterattack, right? Yeah. All right. Causling's gonna shoot you with a bow just to finish you off because you suck. Double team wildfire four damage to opponent party. So I'm assuming that's everybody. All party members gain three bleed. Uh, apply double your party's total bleed to a target. Uh, I don't know that I like that much. I'm not sure I like either one of these that much. Uh, this is okay. Even if I only played on one, it's six defense and one charge, which is okay for one. It's not great, but it's better than a basic defense, so I'll take it. Equipment. So let's just start with 14 or start with 24. I think that might be better. I do gain some with this, but then I'm losing actions, mainly for him because he has only got two actions available. So the heavy armor, I feel like, might be a bit much for him to wear at this point. So let's give you superior medium armor. So you're not going to gain any more, but I'm not going to lose any actions anymore with him. Um, and I could just go ahead and hold on to that. So this one's 14. That's 14. We could also give it to Kosling, but I'm worried Kosling's going to die here pretty quick if I don't heal him up. Because he's going to carry that health over to the next section. Okay, 
So that was the end of the first section and the first boss, and I think I'm going to go ahead and call it here. At this point, I'm starting to cook uh, and um, sweating like a maniac. <laughs> Not that you need that much detail. Uh, but yeah, this has been Banners of Ruin. I've been Disturbing Puppet. Um, I do still have my brooch, so I'll have a little bit of healing. I don't know if Causing's going to survive. Um, I might go ahead and save this and come back to it when I can actually record again to continue the same fight. But uh, if... I get to the final boss. The final boss is just going to kill me. Uh, none of these guys are strong enough to survive, so we'll see how it goes. But anyway, uh, that's enough for me. So this has been Banners of Ruin. Uh, hopefully I'll see you again next time. Until then, have a good one.